Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, and today we're going to be taking a look at President Trump's favorite pollster and applying it to the 2020 electoral map. This is the pollster that Donald Trump retweets on a constant basis because of their favorable approval rating polls for the president. Now, he hasn't done too well nationally. I think we all know that on the overall forecast, Donald Trump has a 13% chance of victory. In terms of the national average, Biden maintains a double-digit lead nationwide with 13 days until the election. So why is this pollster being discussed in particular? Well, since it is President Trump's favorite pollster, you'd think that their results are favorable for Donald Trump. But you can see here, even on their home screen, Joe Biden leads Donald Trump even in the battleground state of Arizona, a state that hasn't voted for a Democrat since 1996. So all in all, this pollster doesn't exactly have the best track record, but President Trump loves it because they consistently give him the highest approval rating out of any poll released or used on a national average. Rasmussen Reports has consistently had him in the positive or at a 48, 49, 50% mark, which generally is much better than where the rest of the polls lie. Now, this could be one of the accurate ones, or it could just be considered an outlier every time. And I'm leaning towards an outlier just because of the fact that we have never really seen uh, Rasmussen Reports defy all expectations and predict an election that everyone else got wrong. And in terms of national polls, this pollster in particular constantly skews to the right. And based off the mean reverted bias, you can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, while well, it leans to the Republican Party. It generally oversamples them and gives them a better uh, expected share of the vote or expected approval uh, than what should actually be there versus the actual result. They've been right 78% of the time, but they have a C plus rating from 538 just due to a number of other inaccuracies on top of uh, you know a number of other factors played into the 538 pollster. So let's go ahead and take a look at the electoral map. They haven't polled every single state. They have polled 90 electoral votes in total coming from Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and North Carolina. That is six battleground states. They all have interesting results. Now, on the national average, if you're wondering where Donald Trump and Joe Biden lie, despite Biden consistently leading on the national average, I mean, we can take a look at the popular vote expected share. Um, you will see that despite 538's average showing Biden with an eight point win nationwide in terms of the popular vote and a 10 point lead, uh, they give Joe Biden a victory of three points on the national average. Coincidentally, that's where Hillary Clinton stood four years ago on Election Day. But Joe Biden is not Hillary Clinton. He is doing so much better than her, which is exactly why there is very little room for crossover. At this point, Biden has taken the election away. We have a lot of less time for uncertainty, you can see we are ending the graph. Over 40 million Americans have voted. 40 million Americans have cast their ballots, which means no take backs. Regardless of whatever may come out for uh, Joe Biden against him in the final two weeks, those 40 million Americans have already submitted their ballots. Now, there are very weird exceptions, but the general rule of thumb is once you've submitted your absentee ballot and it is confirmed by the Secretary of State, you have officially voted. You can't take that back. And when you're looking at 40 million Americans, well, put that into context of 2016. That's roughly one in three voters from 2016. So all in all, 40 million plus is a lot. And we are 13 days away until the election. It does not matter because there won't be a Comey letter. I mean, even if there is, it probably won't be affecting Biden too heavily. But nationally, Biden maintains a three-point lead according to Rasmussen reports. And surprisingly enough, he actually has larger leads in some of these battleground states than his national lead, which I think is just fascinating. So we are at 216 electoral votes for Donald Trump. This number I also want to point out uh, is based off the 2016 election results because they have not given us polls in Iowa or Georgia or Florida. I have resorted to using the 2016 results because that is the last time Donald Trump was on the ballot, obviously, since he's running for re-election. Um, you know, currently based off the polls, Biden leads in both Iowa and Florida and Georgia, actually not both, all three, Iowa, Georgia, and Florida. But I am not going to put that onto the map because it would just look very weird having these states characterized in blue and we're basing it off of Donald Trump's holster. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt in Florida, Georgia, and Iowa. So that leaves 90 electoral votes. We can start off in alphabetical order. I'll probably give up after Arizona because 
I'm not going to figure out what comes next unless I sing the old ABCs in front of you guys, but I probably will. I'm not going to try. So we're just going to work from Arizona all the way over to Pennsylvania. So the state of Arizona, surprisingly enough, I think you saw it on the home screen. Let's see if it pops up coincidentally. Well, it just passed, um, but this is the Senate poll. But in terms of the presidential race, Biden leads Donald Trump by two points in this battleground state. I mean, this is honestly very surprising to me, given that Arizona traditionally votes for the GOP. Prior to 2018, the Democratic Party had not won a Senate race there in decades. In 2016, it became one of the closest Republican races. Now, looking at the 2020 elections, Arizona has been a target for Democrats for the past four years. But had I told you that Barack Obama and Joe Biden's campaign in 2012 would be competitive in Arizona that election year, you would have said I was crazy. Because when Mitt Romney was running, or John McCain was running, or George W. Bush, or George W. Bush in 2000, it doesn't matter. Arizona was not supposed to be a Democratic state. Even Bill Clinton won it with a plurality of voters. Joe Biden is the current favorite in Arizona. The Democratic Party has had monumental shifts in this state over the past four years, and it is very possible that Joe Biden wins Arizona. He is the favorite to win. And even President Trump's favorite pollster, which leans to the Republican Party heavily, gives Joe Biden the victory here. The next state we're going to cover is Wisconsin. I told you we weren't going to go in alphabetical order. We're going from west to east. Wisconsin. This is a state that Donald Trump won by less than a percentage point. He won all three, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, by less than a percentage point. But Wisconsin was the largest margin. It was 0.77%, which translated to roughly 22,000 votes. That was a state where we saw decreased uh, African-American turnout in Milwaukee. We saw decreased rural support for the Democratic Party. Donald Trump sweeped the state in comparison to both Romney and McCain. Now, Barack Obama made the Rust Belt very blue. It was not blue to begin with. Yes, it had voted for the Democratic Party, but it was always in contention. That was not the case in 2008, nor 2012. 2016 rolled around, and Hillary Clinton took the Rust Belt for it to advan- uh, took the Rust Belt, um, took advantage of the Rust Belt voters, except for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was probably the true shocker. I mean, the DNC was held in Pennsylvania. Over $30 million was allocated to Pennsylvania. Wisconsin has not been visited prior to Joe Biden, has not been visited by a Democratic nominee since 2012. Prior to Joe Biden, eight years had gone by since an official Democratic Party nominee had even focused on Wisconsin. Donald Trump outspent Hillary Clinton in Wisconsin. That was not true for practically every other swing state four years ago. Michigan. Donald Trump spent more time in Michigan than Hillary Clinton. She took both of these states for granted. In 2016, these voters were paid her by not electing her as the next president. So Wisconsin is a state that has shifted from being an Obama, Obama, you mean Kerry, Gore, Clinton, Clinton. Uh, you know, these states voted for Democrats. Then Trump rolled around. But this time around, even according to Rasmussen reports, they give Joe Biden a lead in Wisconsin by 8%. That is five points higher than their national lead for Joe Biden. Now, I understand things can change, but I want you to ask yourself, we are 13 days away with roughly one third of the votes cast in 2016 cast already. Will things change? And even if they do, will it truly matter? A lot of voters will be voting in person and on election day. We are expecting to see record turnout. But at the end of the day, those voters that have already voted, those swing voters that have already voted, those independents leaning towards Biden that submitted their ballots for Biden that very well could have changed their minds had this been a normal election year without voting by mail, then sure, we could see some last minute surprise hurting Joe Biden. But, you know, what we saw today, even with the familiar sense of an FBI uh, press conference two weeks before the election, Biden isn't going to be hurt that bad. So the final presidential debate is tomorrow. I will be making a video about it on Friday. But I do want to say the fact that Rasmussen Reports has Biden up by eight points is unprecedented for this pollster. The next state is Michigan. And guess what? Biden's lead grows. It goes from eight points to nine percent. Michigan was the closest out of the three. I think that one was probably the second most surprising. It was the closest state in the 2016 election by percent. Maybe not vote share. New Hampshire was by vote share, but it also has four times less the population than Michigan. But Michigan itself, I mean, this is a state that I was shocked to see go red. 
I'm sure a number of Democrats were also shocked to see it go red. It wasn't called until days later. And Michigan <clears throat> ends up in the Joe Biden column by nine points. So every time President Trump retweets Rasmussen reports, he's solidifying Republican support uh, and trust of this pollster. So if you are a supporter of President Trump, you cannot agree with the national numbers and disagree with the same exact methodology and the same exact uh, you know, form of asking questions that they use in swing states. So Wisconsin, Michigan, go to Biden. Now, the next state is the state of Ohio. This is a state that the Republican Party did very well in in 2016. They came close in 2018. They held the governorship. Uh, the Democratic Party didn't exactly do as well as they thought they would. Now, <clears throat> Ohio is 18 electoral votes. And if Pennsylvania goes blue, Ohio remains inconsequential. But Ohio has been right for the past 60 years about the presidential election winner. And Rasmussen reports confirms that for another four years. They give Joe Biden a one-point lead in a state Donald Trump carried by 8% four years ago. That is a nine-point swing with a Republican-biased pollster that the president of the United States consistently retweets and says is accurate. So if it's accurate for Trump, it's accurate for practically everything. Because if Donald Trump says this is an accurate pollster and they are still saying that Biden wins the presidency, all signs are saying Biden is number 46. So Ohio goes blue. The neighboring state of Pennsylvania goes blue by 3%. And the final state, the 15 electoral votes from North Carolina, has a very silver, a little silver lining for President Trump and goes to him by 1%. So Trump goes from 306 four years ago down to 231. Joe Biden is now at 307 electoral votes. And according to Rasmussen reports, Joe Biden wins Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. These are all states that Donald Trump won in 2016. 75 total electoral votes, flipping from 2016 to now. <clears throat> so Rasmussen reports, President Trump's favorite pollster isn't denying what everyone else is saying. Trafalgar Group isn't denying what everyone else is saying. Sure, the margins are closer, maybe not for Wisconsin and Michigan, but sure, the margins are closer in some of these states. And all in all, <clears throat> if President Trump and the Republican Party is trusting in this pollster, they should also be trusting in the fact that Joe Biden leads and would win the election based off of their polls alone. 307 <clears throat> to 231 could be an all too familiar map in just 13 days. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. <clears throat> on the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.